Hi, I'm Sarah. This is Hardcover Hearts. And I thought I would do a video in honor of my absolute favorite month of the reading year. And that is Women in Translation Month. It's coming up in August. We are right on the cusp of August. I don't really know how that's possible, but yet here we are. And so I've been collecting some books as I want to do, and I thought I would share them with you. Now, this is my pile of possibilities. If you've been following me, especially this year, you'll know it's been an incredibly challenging year for me to, to read. Uh, I've been trying to maintain the pace, but it's just very, very, it's just been very challenging for a myriad of reasons. Uh, so I'm not getting, I'm not e even attempting to get through all of these, but these are the ones that I've had on my shelf that are calling to me right now. So let's talk a little bit about Women in Translation Month. Uh, it's a fantastic e event. It's a month-long reading project to read uh, works by women translated by women. And very interestingly, I went through a, a book, some books that I knew were written uh, by women, but when I opened up to double check the that women translated them, it was not the case, uh, including Cairo uh, of Jenny Erpenbeck, uh, which I had hoped to be including in this list, but it's been translated by a male uh, translator. So uh, won't be reading it as part of this exercise. But let me talk you through what I have compiled here. Uh, and I would love to know if you've read any of these, what your thoughts were, if you think I'd like them, if you think I should prioritize one over the other. So the first one is a book. Uh, this is a Spanish book, I think, set in Spain, in Catalan, yes. Uh, it is The Time of Cherries by, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, this name, Montserrat Rogue is how I think it would be translated. And it's translated by Julia Sanchez. But it's got this fantastic, joyful cover set in Barcelona in 1974. So very interested in to read that one. I mentioned Jenny Erpenbeck. Uh, I have not yet read any Jenny Erpenbeck. And I remember Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventure mentioning that she didn't think High Rose was her, her strongest work. And so I asked her, I said, well, which, which one sh should I start with? And she said The End of Days was her, was her call. And this is that book. And this is translated by, uh, translated from German by Susan Bernofsky. And the back says, a dazzling story of the last century told through the various lives of one woman, an intoxicating masterpiece that pulls apart the threads of destiny and allows us to see the present and the past anew. So interested to do this before doing Cairo. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, this is something that my dear friend Leo of Leo's Little Book Life got me as when we were in London. We were just spent a day together in London uh, in July. And this was, we were at Daunt Books. I had already put this in my pile and he grabbed it and said, I'm going to buy that for you, uh, which is just lovely. So this is the Paris Trilogy by Colombe Schneck and it's translated by Lauren Elkin and Natasha Lurer and blurbed by Deborah Levy. Uh, it looks like it has Deborah Levy, Katie Katamura, Natasha Brown, and Monique Rafi all blurbed it on the back. I specifically remember picking this up because as I was looking through and reading the blurb, at the very end it says, writing in response to Annie Ernaux and in conversation with Elena Ferrante, Columbus Schneck's three semi-autobiographical takes on a woman's life form an elegant exploration of sexuality, bodily autonomy, friendship, loss, and renewal. So that sounded fantastic. Uh, here's another one that I'm, I've been holding on to and looking forward to so much. And this is the writer of The Forbidden Notebook, which I loved last year. This is Alba de Cespedes, and this is her side of the story. Uh, it is translated by Jill Folsted, and there's an afterword by Elena Ferranti. And that cover is just looks sublime. And this one, this is a woman looking back on her life, recalling her youth during the rise of fascism in Italy, the resistance, the fall of Mussolini, and specifically the women 
the lives of the women in her family and her working class neighborhood. Uh, so she is rigorously committed to telling her side of the story. That all sounds uh, completely up my alley. So excited for the, to, to hopefully get to that. This is something I've had for a while. This is They Say Sarah. This is Pauline Delabroy Ala. And this is translated from the French by Adriana Hunter. Let me show you that one. And it says, an intense affair between two women is brought to life in Delabroy Alad's enjoyable debut, a book that reads at times, this is high praise, like a new iteration of Janet Winterson, Winterson's Written on the Body. So that, uh, that will be nice, a nice steamy read for um, August. Then this is a, an author that I got very excited for this book. I didn't I read one book by her, which I loved, which was Fresh Water for Flowers. Uh, this is Valerie Perrin. I didn't like her next novel, which was translated, which was three. I, um, I ended up DNFing it. It just, it wasn't moving. I didn't understand where it was going and I just didn't have any more patience with it. But this one sounded fantastic. And this is her latest novel. This is Forgotten on Sunday by Valerie Perrin. And this is translated by, from the French by Hildegard Serle. And my understanding is this is about a relationship between a worker at a, an old age home and one of the people who lives there, one of the women that lives there, uh, a resident who's close to turning 100 years old. So that appealed to me. And then lastly, I'm starting a new author spotlight series today. Uh, and uh, so I, I'm apologies if you did not uh, follow through on the announcement and sign up for that, but we are closed for this one. Uh, but we'll be doing other types of things like this in the future, should you be interested in joining. Uh, we are gonna be reading Simone de Beauvoir. And so, so selected works from her, and this is uh, She Came to Stay, which is her, her very first uh, book. And this one is translated by Yvonne Moise and Roger Senhouse. So I am cheating a little bit. I am reading this anyway as part of the author spotlight series. So I wanted to add it uh, because there is uh, a woman translator and it was written by the preeminent uh, Simone de Beauvoir. So those are what I have on doc and I'm really excited to to jump into these. I feel like I I'm I'm so thirsty for for books and the time to read. Uh, so I think I just have to start to be more serious about devoting more time, uh, even if I'm tired, <laughs> even if I'm exhausted, uh, because I am I am missing it significantly right now. But I would, again, I would love to know, have you read any of these? What were your thoughts? Did you love any? Are there ones I should prioritize before others? What were your thoughts? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're about to read some amazing books for Women in Translation Month, and I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Bye. <laughs>